Adobe has released a new version of Photoshop with extension to an existing tool. This one, the Frame Tool. So Frame Tool, absolutely useful tool where you can create square frames, rectangular frames, as well as circular frames. But now this has been extended to include triangular frames. So you can click there and create a triangular frame or a custom shape frame. So custom shape here. Now, what can you do with these frames? Well, you can add things into them. That's what it is. It's a holder for content. So let's just go with this one, the custom shape tool. And this is a new feature in the latest version of Photoshop. So if you haven't got it, go to your Creative Cloud up here. See the Creative Cloud there. Click there, go to the updates, update Photoshop, and then you will have your frame tool with this new feature. Well, what you can then do is go with this custom shape. You can use then any shape you've got in your custom shapes panel. And I'm just gonna go with one of these ones. So select that. It's a vector design, it can be any size. It's super sharp, so you can make small, make it big. And I'm just gonna click and drag, and there it is added to the screen there. Well, what you can now do is put some content in it. Obviously at the moment, it's nothing other than a frame without any content. I'm just gonna go to my library, and I've got some pictures here of London. Now I've got red phone box, I've got one here, or Big Ben, you could do all kinds of things, just simply click and drag. And then you've got your design there. Now, one thing you should be aware of when you use this, it is a slightly frustrating tool to use in that you go here to the layers, you can see what you've got here. And now if I go to the move tool, I can reposition this move in this. If you click anywhere inside here, quite often you can just select the contents. You can actually move it around. You might want, of course, to change the frame itself. It does occasionally work, but it's quite often selects the content again. It is odd. So what I would suggest, just go here, click this, and now you can see the frame here. And that's what you've got to use. You've got to manipulate that. Don't click inside, because if you do that, then you'll be moving the contents again, and it will go back to this one. So now I can resize it. So let's just resize that so I can make it bigger. I can make it smaller. Now, you'll notice one thing, you can't rotate it. Slightly frustrating feature. Do not know why you can't. You can't with this, there's no option here for rotation. But what you can now do is you can then reposition it again, make certain you select the, this edge, the frame itself. Otherwise you will find you select the content. Now what you might like, I want to change it. That picture of that phone box, it's not what I want. So libraries, let's go and select another picture of London. I've got this picture here, Big Ben and obviously House of Parliament. I can then drag this over and then add that. And then you can see I can manipulate that, I can resize it. Now the image of course isn't a vector. It's not a vector design, so obviously you can make it only a certain size, but the frame itself is a vector design. And what you can then do is you can now click here. Now, one thing you can't do is you can't go up here and I'm just selecting the frame tool. If I select this, go up here and say change it. You can change that, change that. It will not change the selected frame. It would be a nice feature if it could. That would be a nice replace feature, but sadly it does not appear to do that. So what you can do is obviously just have to create the frame again very quickly. The next thing, what if you want to add a shadow to your frame? Well, you can't directly. As a frame tool like this, set up like this you can't do this now make certain that you select this don't select just one part of it select the whole thing so make certain the whole thing is selected otherwise when you convert it to a smart object you'll just be converting say the contents into a smart object which will be no help at all so what you do is make certain you've selected the whole of this layer then go to layer then smart objects and convert to smart object and now it's converted to smart object. It's still a frame internal to that smart object, but smart object is another container around that frame. And then you can go to layer and layer style, and this time drop shadow. And now you can see you've got your lovely drop shadow or any of these other ones, of course, you can go and add a bevel, emboss, etc., to your frame as well and click OK. And you can see now you've got your design there. But again, you might think, I want to change my frame. 
ah, can't do anything now because it's the smart of it. Well, you can, just double click, double click, and then you can change it. But before I do that, let's just quickly close this bit. Don't want that, uh, that's amazing how long that title was, all the way along, made it all the way to the end. What I can do now is a smart, this smart object, I can duplicate it. So I can just say duplicate that and you can see you can create them multiple frames. Of course, you could do this with vector masks. It's perfectly reasonable as well, but frames is a sort of equivalent to that as well. But I think this is quite an easy thing. Once you get used to selecting the content, selecting the frame, I think that's the only bit of hassle I was fine with it and the fact you can't easily convert. Now I can resize this as well. You can see then I can resize this one again. I can make that a bit smaller, perfectly reasonable. And also, great thing about this, now you can rotate it. As a smart object, you can rotate it. So press return. So I've got this design spread out across the entire image. But suddenly at this point you decide, I want to change this frame. I'm not happy with the frame. Well, not the frame shape, but the contents of the frame. So what you can now do is you can go here and double click. Double click and you go to this. And now you can see here you've got this image. Well, again, I can go here and I can think, you know what? I don't want this, don't want Big Ben, etc. I want another scene of London, so let's just drag this over and I'm just gonna place that instead. I can move it around, reposition it, do all the things you can with a frame. And let's just move this out of the way so you can see it a bit better. I say resize it, all kinds of things. Close the document again, like I say, it's quite a big name there, smiling, walking, <laughs> save. And now you can see what happens. Every single one of those objects all are updated, all the frames are updated. And you can modify it, of course, in many other ways as well. Add additional effects, add brush strokes and things, whatever, once you're inside the smart object. So you can modify this in countless ways. So that's the new frame tool. Let's just remove all these. And I just before I finish, I'm just going to go to the other one that I haven't gone through, which I think is a really nice one as well. But it's an unusual choice. I think personally it would have been nice if they added the star feature. But it's great. Any addition of a non-AI feature in Photoshop is always a welcome addition as far as I'm concerned. I love AI, but at the same time, I really wish that Photoshop would have many more features that are not AI. Unless someone turns around and says, this is AI. Well, what you got here? Triangle. And you can just add this triangle. Now, of course, you could add triangle custom shapes. I've got quite a lot of custom shapes that are triangular designs. But there, you can quickly add that triangle. And again, another scene of London. Let's just go for another one, St Paul's, and just drag that over. And I'm part of, obviously, advertising the tourist thing, office for London. I love London. Best place, best city in the world. Love going there. So, love St Paul's. Worked very close to St Paul's. And you can see now, triangular design there. And again, you can manipulate it, resize it, move it around. It works exactly the same as the other tools, all these other ones. And you can, of course, rotate that as well. You can rotate that bit. You can't, again, rotate the actual frame, which is an odd feature, but that's the way they've done it. And you can see now you've got a picture of St. Paul's there, slightly at an angle, probably a bit more like Pisa, Leaning Tower. And then you can manipulate that. And exactly the same as before, you can always then go back to the layers, Make certain you select the whole thing, not just part of it, because this is the key thing which you select. Here, this is a good way of selecting it. Then select the whole thing, then go to layer, and again, smart object, convert to smart object. Hope you found this of interest. Hope you find this feature of great use. Please let me know in the comments below. If you've got any questions, comments, always great to hear from you. It's always nice to get, whether it's useful, whether it's too quick, too slow, should I be covering this feature? Are you interested in the frame tool in Photoshop? Really be quite interested to know whether this is a tool you use. I find it a very useful tool for lots of creative designs. I think it's one of those ones that slightly frustrates at times as well. So I'm not going to say it doesn't frustrate. Also, please subscribe. Always add new videos all the time. A like or dislike, always appreciated as well. Bye.